Today we're looking at nets, surface area and volume of 3D solid. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw an accurate net for each of these four uh, different shapes, uh, 3D shapes. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the surface area and also calculate the volume for, for each of these as we, we go along. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the cuboid and we'll go for the net first of all. Net, surface area and then the volume of each of the shapes and that's the way we're going to go ahead with uh, these questions. Right then. So what we have here is we've got the uh, the cuboid. Now I've got a, a small kind of model of what that cuboid should look like. So we've got a cuboid sitting there like that and what I'm going to do with the net, I'm going to unravel it and basically what it's going to look like is something like that shape there. It could look different from that if you place some of the, the faces in a different position, but uh, that's the way that I'm going to draw it when I do it on the, the graph paper, as, as we're just going to go. Right, so, so that's the cuboid that we're going to work out first of all. Right, so first things first, let's uh, look at what we're going to go for. We're going to go for the, the base first of all. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, write on the base. Here we go. So there's my base here. So there's the base. Okay, the base. So that's flying flat on the ground. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that. And I can see that that's four along the way. And there's five up there. So that would tell me that that side there must be five centimetres. So let's draw that bit first. Okay. Right. So, so let's start. And we'll go for starting here. And let's go for the ruler. Right, so the base, what I've got is, I've got, it's five, okay, five down to here, it's four along, okay, five up, and then four back along there. So there's, there's my base just drawn, yeah, okay, so base. What I'm then going to do is, when I look back at the shape, if I've drawn my base, what I'll then do is I'll do my, uh, left hand side. So this one here, it's looking like this here, this one here is my left hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that next to the left of it and that's going to be 2 by 5, a rectangle 2 by 5. So let me just draw that. Two along the way, close that up there, so there's 2 there, 5 there. This one here was 4, and five. This one here is the left hand side. Okay, left hand side. I will then go for the right hand side. So the right hand side would be this one that's sitting here. So this is going to be my right hand side here. Right hand side. And I know that's five along that way and it's two high. So again, I'm just going to unroll that and I'm going to put it here. Two long, five up. Right, so that's my right hand side. And what I'll do is I'll then take the top down from here, bring the top down and unroll, un unravel that as well. So we'll go for the top. This one here will be the top. Right, so the top is going to come down beside the right hand side. I'm going to unravel that and pull it down over this side here. And I know that the top, again, is 4 by 5. Okay, that's the top. Okay, and what I should have is that um, opposite sides, like the left-hand side and right-hand side, should be the same size, should be the same shape, and the base and the top should be the same as well. What I'm now going to look at is I'm going to look at the back. So right over at the back here. So I've got the back. Right, so the back. And I can see that the size of the back is going to be four along and it's two up. Okay, four along and two up. And I'm going to join that onto the base. So it's as if I'm going to fold it down that way there. So I'm folding it down from the base, 
I'll just draw that in. I'm going to also just fold down the front that we've got there. So that's the back. I'm folding down the front to this side here, and that should be the net of the uh, cuboid that we have completed. Net of the cuboid. So that's going to be four there, two, that's four, and that's two, and this part here is the front. Okay. Right, so that's, uh, that's part one. Uh, completed. I've just put some, some other sizes in here, so that was 4 and 5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the uh, the surface area. To work out the surface area, I must work out the area of all the, all the parts, and I'm just going to add them all up together. Right, so inside here, I'll go for this one first. So the area equals length times breadth. Length is 4, breadth is 2, so that's going to give me 8 centimetres squared. This one down the bottom must be the same, 8 centimetres squared. Left hand side, 5 times 2, so the area equals length times breadth. It's going to be 5 times 2, which gives me 10 centimetres squared. This one here also must be 10 centimetres squared. <coughs> the base and the top, we'll go for that next, so that's 4 times 5. So the area here is equal to 4 times 5, which gives me 20 centimetres squared. This one here is also 20 centimetres squared. So for surface area, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add all of these parts up. Right, so what I've got is, I'll just go for it, I've got 8. I've got another 8 down here. I've got 20. I've got another 20 and I've got 10 and 10. So if I just all add all of these parts up, that should give me the surface area of the cuboid. Surface area, when I add them together, that would be 76, and we're working in centimetres, so it'll be centimetres squared. Okay, so that's part two complete. Let's look at part three, and we're going to try and work out the volume. So the volume of a cuboid is length, breadth, height. Length times breadth times height. If I just go back to the original, so the length times the breadth times the height, so it'll be 4 times 5 times 2, and that should give me my volume. Okay, so the volume is going to be equal to 4 times 5 times 2, so that'll give me 20, that'll give me 40, and that's going to be centimetres cubed. There's my final answer there. So that's uh, this part completed. So that's a cuboid. If you need to go back and have a look at it, you can go back and uh, go over that yourself. Okay, just draw in the front face here as well. Okay, right, we'll put that on the side. What we'll look at now is we'll look at a triangular prism. So we've got a right angled uh, triangle here, and what we'll do is we'll work out the surface area, uh, the volume, and before that we'll go for the net of this uh, shape here. Okay, so, so let's, uh, let's start that one off. Right, going for the net, I'm going to first of all go for the base. So what I've got is the base sitting down here. So here's my base. So the base. And what we'll do with this one here is, I'm going to start that one about here somewhere, I think. That would probably give me plenty of room up above and below. So let me draw the base in. So the base is 2 along by 5. So 2 along the way. By five, and that's my base. So what I'll then do is I'll uh, look at the uh, the face that's here, and I'm just going to call that the. Uh, I'll go for that as being the the back. Okay, so this one here, just being the the back. So let's go and do that, and I'm going to just join it onto the base, just as I, I do that uh, net. So the back is 3 by 5, so I'm just going to go along 3. I'm going to go 5, and that should be that one completed there as well. So that's going to be the back. 3 there, 5 there, this one 5, and 2 for the base. Right, so, so when I go back up here and I'm looking at the uh, the front face, this is the one that's right here, okay, the one that's sloping in the triangle, 
I don't really know how long it is, but I know it's five wide, but I don't know how long it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Pythagoras theorem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the uh, the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to call that uh, that x to work out the size. So x squared is going to be equal to. And Pythagoras theorem working out the hypotenuse, I'm going to add, okay, I'm going to add the square of 3 and the, the square of 2. So that's going to give me 9 plus 4, gives me the 13. I'll then take the square root of 13 to find out uh, the value. And what that should work out to, if I go to one decimal place, that will be 3.6 centimetres. We'll just go to one decimal place for this here. So that's now 3.6 centimetres. So I know that this face here is going to be a rectangle, 5 by 3.6. So let's draw that one next. Right, so I'm going to go 3.6, that'll take me out to there. Okay, I'll just come down to there. And to there. Okay, so I know that this is 3.6, and that there is still 5, isn't it? Okay, so let's now go back up to the shape, and what we need to do is I need to look at the, uh, I'll go for the right hand side first here. So this one here is the right hand side, and I know that's a triangle, and if I think about it from the base, I'm just going to slide it down from the base. In fact, if I look at a small model that I've got of it again, here we go. So, looking something like that there, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm already brought that down, brought the back down like that. What I'm having to do is for the left and right sides, I'm going to just fold them down and they're going to look like uh, triangles. So let's go and do that. Right then, so folding that down that way and folding the left hand side down this way, we'll just do that on our neck. So that'd be there and that would be all the way along there. So that's going to be three and this side here is two. While I'm folding the other one down here, goes there and there. There we go. So there's the, the first thing that's going to be the net of the triangular prism that uh, I've just had there. Right, so I've got all my dimensions. So I'm going to just work out the, uh, the area of each of these and add them all up together. So the area is the length times width because it's just a rectangle here. 5 times 3 gives me 15. This one here is 2 by 5, 2 times 5, which gives me 10 centimetres squared. This one here is going to be uh, length times breadth, that's 5 times 3.6, that should give me 15 and 3, that will give me 18 centimetres squared. Right, for the, uh, the sides, the left hand side and right hand side, I've got 3 times 2 divided by 2. So I know that the area of the triangle, length times width, and I'll just divide that by 2. So 3 times 2, divided by 2, just gives me 3 centimetres squared. The one down the bottom here will be 3 centimetres squared as well. Right, so got everything I need to work out my surface area. Right, so what we've got, we've got 3 plus 3 plus, so that's 3 and 3, plus 15, plus 10, plus 18, that should give me a total of, let's go for that, so it's going to be, that's going to be 49 centimetres squared. Okay. Right, next part, we're going to be looking at the volume. So the volume of a triangular prism. Uh, what I'm going to be looking at here is that for, for any prism that I've got, if I could work out the area of that face there, I just need to times it by the length that goes back the way, and that would give me my volume. So I know that this area here is 3, I've already worked that out, I'll times that by 5, and that would give me the volume. So volume is equal to my area times the length, so the area of the one of the triangles is 3 times the length, which is 5, that should give me 15 centimetres cubed for my volume. Okay, we'll move on from this one here. We're going to look at a different triangular prism this time. 
And what we're looking at is we're looking at a triangular prism that has isosceles uh, triangle and the prism um, is uh, back the way by three. So slightly different for this one here and slightly different calculation. The last one I needed Pythagoras theorem to work out uh, how to draw the net. I don't need to do that for this one here, but I will need it a bit later on. Right then, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the base, okay? So the base that I've got here is 6 along the way by 3. So 6 by 3 for my base. And what I'll do is I'll start that, let's go for, start that about here, would probably fit in. Right then, so let's go for 6 along the way. So there's 3, and that's going to be 6. And it's 3 down the way, so I'll go for 3 down the way. And there we go. Right, so what we've got there is, I've just drawn that up for you. So that's going to be 6 centimetres, and that's going to be 3 centimetres there. So once I've drawn that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold down each of these parts here. So what I'll do is I'll call this one the, the left-hand side here. And I'll call this one here the right-hand side. And I can see that that's 4 by 3 rectangle and 4 by 3. So either side of the, the base, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a 4 by 3 rectangle. So either side, <coughs> right, so the sloping side is 4, 4 along the way, 4 along the way here. Oops, I slipped. There we go there, and I'll just finish that off by completing this one here. Right, so that's my left hand side, that's my right hand side. Sizes that I've got just straight from the diagram, that was three there and four there. So three here and four there. Right, so the next thing I'm going to be looking at is to try to fold down the back that I've got here. There's the back. The back, and I'll fold down the front at the same time. So again, I've got a kind of simple model for that again. So just cut that out, and there's a small model that would look similar to it. So what I've already done is I've drawn the base. I've already folded this part out here, folded this one out, and then what I'll do is I'll just fold down these. I'll fold them down at uh, where they are there. So my neck should look similar to that one there. Right then, so one way that I can do that, um, to, to draw that, um, is I could use a set of compasses. And what I could do is I could set my compasses to four. If I set it to four, what I could do then is to draw it. I could um, put my point on here. If I set it to four centimetres, just pull it in a bit, just about there. Okay, what I can do is from there, just do an arc from that side and an arc from that side there. And that should roughly be tell me where it should be. If I draw it accurately enough, I can I can get it right. Okay, and that would be to about there as well. Right, so another way that I could do that to find that uh, size would be to use Pythagoras theorem. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw a straight line down here. So I'm a straight line coming down here. I'm making up a right angle triangle. And that right angle triangle will be looking like this here. And what I'm trying to find out is I'm trying to find out this height here. So I'm trying to find this part out here. Half of the base is going to be 3, so that's going to be 3, so right angle triangle, and I know that that side there is 4. So from there, I'm just going to try and work out uh, the sizes that I need. So by Pythagoras theorem, what we'll do is, I know that I'm not looking for the uh, hypotenuse, so I'm going to subtract. Just take the, the biggest side first, squared and I'll subtract the other shorter side, squared. Okay, I've got 16, take away 9, 
that should give me B zero. Give me seven. Okay. That'll be seven. So once we look uh, that one through there. So if that's going to be seven, I'll just take the square root of seven. And I'll just grab a calculator for that then. There we go. Right there. Right, so square root of seven, square root of seven is going to give me 2.6 centimetres, and that's to one decimal place. Okay, so my diagram below will be quite close to 2.6 where I've put my, my arcs across, but uh, I know that what I could do is go to the middle and measure up 2.6, and that should give me, the, give me it properly to there. So about there it'll be, and to there. So that's my net being appearing, and from there, so it should be 2.6, and again 2.6 from there. So that distance there is 2.6. What I will need that for, this distance here, I'll need that for to work out the area and also the volume of the triangular prism. Right, let's go, that's part one complete. Okay, I know that that side's but I'm not really going to use that when I work this through. I know that this side is 6 centimetres, and I know that's uh, 2.6 now that I've uh, calculated that. Right, part two. We're trying to work out the surface area. So a surface area is just going to be all of the areas added up. So area of the, the rectangle, length times breadth, that's going to be 3 times 4. That's going to give me 12 centimetres squared. This one here will also be 12 centimetres squared. The base is going to be length times width for a rectangle, 3 times 6, gives me 18 centimetres squared. For this one here, what we've got is, if I'm trying to work out the uh, area of the triangle, what I've got is, I've got the length times width, and we'll divide it by 2. So length is going to be 6, times the breadth, which is 2.6, I'll divide that by 2, and what I should get from there is 7.8, and that's going to be centimetres squared to one decimal place, okay? This one here must also be the same size, because they're opposite, um, opposite triangles of the, the prism. Right, let's go and add this, uh, this all up. So what I've got is 12 and 12, 12 plus 12 plus 18, plus 7.8 plus 7.8 and when I add these up that should take me to 57.6 centimetres squared. So that's going to be my surface area. Now finally the volume. So the volume is going to be equal to the, the area of the triangle times the length. So the area of the triangle we worked out was uh, 7.8 and we'll multiply that by the length, and the length is going to be 3, it goes back 3, and that's going to give me a total of, let's see, that's going to be, do something like this, 7.8 times 3, and that's going to give me 23.4 centimetres cubed. Right then, so, so that would be that one there complete, and it's just a different uh, triangular prism that uh, you would have to work out. Right, finally, let's just look at uh, a cylinder. So, quick look at a cylinder, what we have is uh, we've got the radius given, and we've got the height given, which is 2 centimetres, and the first thing I'll do is I'll go and try and uh, draw the net of that one. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two circles either side and then I've got this curved surface that's here. So if I look at a quick model of that, so that's a basic model of a cylinder, if I look at that. Right, so when I fold that out and I take the top up the way and I fold the bottom down the way and I unravel the curved surface, that's a, a big rectangle, or it's a long rectangle in this uh, cylinder that I've got. So you can see that that curved surface there turns into a long rectangle and top and bottom circles. So that's what uh, my uh, net should be looking like. Right, let's go and do that. Okay. 
Right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my compass and the radius was 2.5 so if I set my compass to 2.5 let's see if I can set that just now roughly 2.5, yep what I'll do is I'll um, start it from here and I'll draw my first circle around here okay, hands getting in the way, sorry about that Right, so there's my first circle that's there. What I'll then do is I'll draw the uh, the curved surface. The thing with the curved surface is um, I'm I'm not sure how long it actually is. I know that it's too high, but I don't know how long it is yet. So with the with the model that I unravelled, if you think about it, that part that I'm unravelling on the big rectangle is actually the circumference of the circle. So that distance from here all the way along to here is the circumference of a circle. So let's work out the circumference. So the circumference of a circle is going to be equal to pi times its diameter. So that's going to be pi times 2 times uh, 2.5. That's going to give me 5. So from there I should be able to work out the, uh, the circumference. So that's going to be 15.7 centimetres. And that's going to be to one decimal place. Okay. Okay, yep, that's right. So from there, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to draw down below, I'm going to draw this curved surface here. But it's going to be a big rectangle when I uh, unravel it and put it into its net. And then um, we'll just draw that out. So I can start that uh, anywhere. I'll just start it here, just right on the end. Okay, and I'm going to go along and it's 15.7. So let's go along on the squares that are here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, and 0.7 would take me to there. Okay, and I'll just join that up there. So that's the uh, the curved surface that I've just drawn there as one big rectangle. The final thing that I need to do anywhere along the bottom here is I'll just go for the circle. I'll just draw it down below it. And that's going to be the bottom. Okay, so what I have here is the top. I've got the bottom here. And this one here is the curved surface. Right, let's work out the area of... Uh, this because I've done my first part. Um, remember the, the length of this line here was 15.7 centimetres um, and I knew that uh, the diameter was 5 and my radius, my radius here, radius is equal to 2.5 just from the diagram. Right so, so let's go and do our uh, surface area. So surface area is going to be the area of these three parts added together. It's two centimetres. So the area of the rectangle, length times breadth, which is 2 times 15.7. Okay. And what that should give me is 31.4 centimetres squared for the rectangle. Now for each of the circles, what we'll go for is we'll go for the area of a circle. Be equal to pi r squared. So pi times 2.5 squared should give me the uh, the area of the, the circles. So what I'll do is uh, just in the calculator pi times 2.5 squared that should give me 19.6 to one decimal place. Okay, so that'll be 19.6 centimeters squared to one decimal place. This one here also 19.6 centimeters squared for the surface area. What we'll do is we'll just add up the three parts. So I've got 19.6 plus 19.6 plus the uh, the curved surface, which is 31.4. I should work that out to be is 70.6 centimetres squared. So there's my surface area. That was part two. Okay, that's the surface area. I'll go for the volume. So for part three, the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared 
times the height of it. So remember pi r squared is just the area. So a cylinder is just a, a kind of special prism. And uh, if I work out the area of the, the circular part, I can then just multiply it by the height. And uh, I can work out the, the volume of the cylinder. So let's go ahead and do that. Pi times 2.5 squared times the height, which is 2. Remember, we already worked that out, so it's going to be 19.6 times 2, and that should give me a total volume of 39.2 centimetres cubed. And that would be my answer for that one there. Okay, so what we were doing there was the cylinder. Um, we've covered um, quite a few 3D shapes there. What we've done is we've covered uh, a cuboid. If you get a cube, a cube is very similar to this. The only difference is that uh, all the faces are the same size. Um, we've tried the uh, the triangular prism with a right angle triangle, triangular prism with an isosceles triangle. We've had to use Pythagoras theorem for different reasons, but uh, we've done that for both of these, and we've completed it with the the area, volume, and the net of the cylinder. So hope this has helped you with uh, nets, surface area, and volume. And uh, good luck.